Hi there, I'm William Morgan, and I'm one of the creators of Linkerd, the open source service mesh and cloud native computing foundation project. Thanks for joining our course. In this class, we are going to have a educational and hopefully fun time together. We're going to teach you all about Linkerd, including a whole lot of very practical hands-on knowledge. So you can run Linkerd in your own cluster. But before we do that, let's take a moment to look back at the history of the service mesh so we can understand why Linkerd and the other service mesh projects actually came into being. And the way I like to think about it is if we look at the core features of the service mesh, we basically can divide them into three different buckets. There's a set of features around reliability, a set of features around observability, and there's a set of features around security. And what's interesting about the service mesh is that none of those features are actually new things. They're all things that we've had in our applications for a long time, right? And what the service mesh does, the value of the service mesh is that it provides us those features at the platform layer rather than at the application layer. And that distinction is what the tale of the history of the service mesh is all about. So if you think back to the 2000s, early 2010s, we had the web scale companies, companies like Facebook and Google and Twitter and what they were doing was they were taking their monolithic applications and they're breaking them into these microservices, right? And as they did that, each of these companies followed the same pattern, which is that they realized that the communication between the services was this new thing and they had to instrument that, they had to control it, they had to have mechanisms for treating it as a first class member of the ecosystem it was something they never had before. We used to have the three tier apps where you'd have a web server in the front and then the application monolith and then a database. Now all of a sudden, instead of having three tiers, we have this topology of applications. And so each of those companies took the same path, which is that they built these very intricate libraries for controlling that new service to service communication. And that was basically the earliest form of the service mesh. At Twitter, there was a library called Finagle and every service at, Finagle would, uh, at Twitter would use Finagle to communicate both on the client side and on the server side. And you as a developer would say to Finagle, hey, I'm service A, I want to talk to service B. And under the hood, Finagle would uh, do retries, it would do timeouts, it would instrument every aspect of that communication and provide metrics. So that was the earliest form of the service mesh. Now, as we advance into the world of Kubernetes and containers, we actually have a mechanism now for addressing some of the drawbacks of the library approach, which is mainly that the library has to be written in the same language or the same framework that uh, the application it is, uh, that the application itself is. So if we can pull that code out and turn it into a separate proxy, then it doesn't matter what language the proxy is written in, it doesn't matter what language the application is written in. And the very first version of Linkerd way back in 2016 was actually literally finagle wrapped up in proxy form. It was a finagle client and a finagle server, and then some YAML to configure it. Now, the big advantage of doing that, of course, is that now finagle, which was on the JVM, you know, could be run alongside your application code, and it didn't matter what language your application was run in. And if we do things right, we can totally decouple it so the application doesn't even know that the service mesh is there. Now, since 2016, Linkerd has undergone a huge rewrite that's gotten off of Finagle and off of the JVM, and the modern version of Linkerd, which is what you're going to learn about in this class, uh, is built with a proxy component, a data plane proxy component written in Rust and a control plane written in Go. It's very heavily tied to Kubernetes, and it's, it's, it fits right into the Kubernetes ecosystem. But the origins of the service mesh you know, uh, tie back to that very first sort of evolution from monolith to microservices that happened at these web scale companies. So I hope that makes sense. Please enjoy the rest of the class and uh, especially this chapter, which is one near and dear to my heart. Thank you very much and I will see you again in later chapters.